Hi everyone, welcome to the AI University where we explore the latest advancements and trends in machine learning, deep learning and AI as well as try to create a new real life based projects. I am Nitin, your host and today we are going to dive deep into one of the most crucial step in building an object detection model which is data preparation. So when it comes to building an object detection model, the data set is arguably the most important component. The data set is used to train the model and is also used to test the model's performance on unseen data. In order to build a model that can accurately detect objects in new images or videos, we need a data set that contains a diverse set of labeled examples of the object we wish to detect. One of the key ingredients in building these computer vision related deep learning models is annotating the images first or labeling the images first. A labeled data set for object detection typically consists of images and or videos along with the annotations in the form of bounding boxes for each image or frame. The annotation can contain information about the location, size and class of each object instance within the image or frame. This information or the labeled or annotated images are then used to train the model to recognize the objects and their location in the image. It's important to use a data set that is representative of the objects and the images that the model will encounter in the real world scenario. Otherwise, it may lead to poor performance or bias. A good data set should contain a diverse set of examples and variations of the objects. It should also contain a diverse set of backgrounds and conditions. This will help the model to generalize well and be able to detect the objects in different conditions. The quality and quantity of the uh, data set also affect the model performance. A large and diverse data set will lead to better performance and it's also important to have a balanced distribution of the classes in the data set in order to ensure the model generalizes well. In addition, having a diverse data set can also help to tackle the problem of overfitting, which is a common issue in machine learning. In today's video, we will use Darwin platform of V7 Labs. Thanks V7 for sponsoring today's video. V7 is one platform that provides both free and paid versions. Free version is available to all the educators and researchers. You can go to this link to apply for a free education account. I will share the link in the description section. Before moving forward, please consider subscribing to this channel if haven't subscribed already and press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications of all the new videos. So I have opened the Darwin platform as you can see here. Here first of all we will create a data set of images on which you want to train the model. I have already created a data set as you can see here miscellaneous uh, folder. Uh, here I have uploaded 495 files and I created four classes here uh, and I in fact created the bounding boxes as well for those images which I will be using for model training later on. But for now I will just create a new data set so that you can also know how to create these uh, data set and create the bounding boxes around it. And the reason I created this uh, data set related to road signs because uh, we wanted to use it for the use case for which this model can be trained and which I told you already is related to self-driving cars. Because by looking at these uh, traffic signs, the car can take required actions. That is, if there is a stop sign ahead, then car should be able to detect it and stop as soon as it approaches the stop sign. And if uh, there is a speed limit sign, uh, which car has detected then it should follow the particular speed accordingly. So in my data set I created uh, uh, you know four classes. Number one class was a uh, traffic light. Number two was stop sign. Number three was speed limit and number four was cross walk. Okay. So those were the details around uh, this data set, uh, miscellaneous data set, which I created uh, and it contains 495 files and I'm going to use this data set later on for training purpose. For, but for now, let me show you how to create the new data set. So click on new data set and then here you can give uh, the name of that data set. I will say road sign related data 
and again i'm telling you this is just for the sake of letting you know how to create this data set but eventually i'm going to use uh, my already created data set for the training purpose so click on continue and next uh, you need to uh, upload the training images so here you need to click on browse and i will upload two sample images from my computer system and these are pedestrian and rail crossing related data set or images so you can see that i have uploaded the images once the images are uploaded you can then click on continue button and you if you want you can provide any data set instructions such as create bounding boxes for pedestrian and railroad signs okay so this way you can give certain instructions here again this is an optional field then you can click on create new classes button here so a pop up will appear here you can enter different class names so in my case uh, the images i uploaded just now one is related to pedestrian another is related to railroad so i can mention the class name as pedestrian create uh, click the annotation type as bounding box because we want to create the bounding box around those objects in the image and then click on quick add now you can create another class which is railroad and click on quick add again click on cancel so here you can see that the pedestrian and rail railroad classes are added now these are the newly created classes click on save and continue now as a final step you need to select a workflow this workflow is nothing but a kind of a machine or deep learning pipeline i am selecting basic workflow here so you can click on pick template now from a data set management perspective you can create a folder here dedicated to the type of images you have this is useful when you have hundreds and thousands of images and you want to just segregate uh, specific images so that nothing gets diluted so let me first select these images and then you can click on the folder button here okay and then you can write the name of the folder i would say pedestrian and railroad and then you can click on this folder button here or folder sign here so now you have a well defined directory structure where you have all the images which you want to train now click on this folder and open any image so let me open this image so on the left hand side you will see lot of options such as auto annotate which is very fantastic feature of darwin if you choose this option then darwin will annotate any image automatically so you can explore these options on the left hand side we are interested in creating bounding boxes around an image or around an object so we will use the bounding box tool which is this one okay so click on it okay and you can now draw a bounding box like this once you release it a pop up will appear asking you to select the class since this is a pedestrian related image so we will pick the pedestrian class here and then click on save okay so on the right hand side under notations section you will see a pedestrian class added and the bounding box created around this object this means your label has been generated as pedestrian for this image similarly you can annotate all your images like this it may be the case that single image has multiple objects so you can draw bounding boxes around different objects in a single image likewise let me select the another image which is railroad sign now for this one click on bounding box and you can see here uh, a drop down okay where you have all the classes since this particular uh, object is related to railroad so we will select railroad here from the drop down and create a bounding box around it okay and you can see that railroad annotation has been added on the right hand side so this is this image is now labeled image or annotated image which is ready for our model training now on the top right corner you will see this send to notate send to annotate button right this is one of the status and these status help in keeping track of your image data quality there are four statuses namely upload new annotate and review we have already gone through upload and new status that's why uh we saw send to annotate only next stage is send to review so 
let's click on send to annotate and you can see that next stage is send to review so this is uh, the next stage where uh, if you, if you are, you are the person who has annotated the image another person or quality uh, assurance related person can review this image and he can either uh, you know return it back to you if he finds any uh, issue with the image or any error in the image or you can he can click on send to review so once the image is finalized then it can be marked as completed so let me mark it as completed once you do that you will see a green check mark indicator here at the bottom uh, for that image telling you that the image annotation has been completed you can do similar thing with the other image also okay so send to annotate for the other image as well send to review and then mark as completed so you can follow the same approach for all of your images so at this point we have our labeled data set and the data preparation task is completed here okay so let me now go back to my original uh, data set which i am going to use for model training and let me show you the image annotations i have done for that data set so you, if you see in this particular folder i have 495 images and all are in completed status and this is very important before training any model on v7 platform all your all of your images should be annotated and should be marked as completed okay so let me open one of the image so let me open this particular image so earlier i told you right that a one image can have uh, you know multiple objects and uh, you know your uh, uh, image can have multiple classes so you can see on this particular image i have two classes one is crosswalk which is this one and another one is a speed limit which is this one okay so this way you can prepare your data set or label it annotate it uh, in order to make it ready for training purpose let me now show you how to auto annotate a particular image let me first upload another image so first i will go to my road sign related data set so click on add data here but before moving forward uh, friends uh, let me uh, tell you one thing so as you can see here on the right hand side v7 darwin gives you opportunity to upload the images using command line options as well you can find options to upload images folders or videos from command line recommended batch size is over 2000 images since my image is on my computer so let me uh, click to browse option only to upload my image and then let me click on upload so here is my uploaded image friends auto annotation feature reduces the annotation time significantly to 2.5 seconds using v7 platform as compared to other tools that take roughly 34 seconds you can auto annotate any image from clustered objects it doesn't matter what angle and lighting condition they are present in so to annotate an object click on auto annotate tool and all you need to do is create a bounding box around each object and then let me add a class as car okay click on add class and then i can select the class and then save so you can see here that it has annotated this car pretty well right created the edges all around the car here so this way you can create the bounding boxes around each object you don't have to align any crosshairs exactly to the edges so this annotation tool will understand the object within that boundary as you can see here so it has understood the boundary clearly this process is pixel perfect and understands what object you want to focus on also it saves a lot of time all right so this is the way we can auto annotate any objects in a given is, uh, image isn't it great now one more thing friends i would like to tell you uh, so if you want to export any of your data set then you can click on this export data button on the top right corner a pop-up will appear where you can create the name of the export so you can click on create export give the name as car data set latest in the format drop down you can select any of the format like coco darwin 
uh, YOLO, any of the format you can select, right? Since Darwin is most versatile and is in JSON format, I can just click here, okay? Then you have this items to export uh, options as well. Uh, you can either, uh, you know, export all the data, current filters or selected ones. So I would just click on export three items. Okay. And then here in the download button, you can just click on download post which it will try to download this data set on your computer. I'm not doing that right now. So this is the way you can export the data as well. So folks, this is it for this video. In the next video, I will cover the model training stage where I will show you how to train the model on our data set. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon as it will help you provide notifications of all the upcoming videos, folks. Thank you.